Well, the old work trailer is a mess. Had stuff just piled everywhere, but I've used these shelves for years. And uh, the thing with the shelves, it's worked fine, but you just uh, put stuff in there and it gets slides around, piled, and, and then, you know, you come back and in a hurry and you just throw it back in there and it gets all in a mess. So anyway, I'm going to take these shelves out and uh, sort of build something custom in there that I think will work a little better. It's just a lot of wasted space in here when you look. You know, you put something in, you got three or four or five inches above it. It just, it's just it's not work real good, but I'll probably leave the old dresser up there in the front and the little shelf, and I've got a toolbox there in the front. Try to do something custom here to make it a little bit better. I will keep this side. This is where I, 16 foot trailer, so if I buy something 16 feet long, I can get it through the center here. 12 foot long, I can strap to the side if it's sheet goods, but uh, sheet rock, anything like that, I can strap it to the side of the trailer, so that works pretty good. So, all right, we're gonna tear her down and bring her back to life. All right, I got the shelves tore out and got most of the junk out of the trailer. But the one thing, when I designed this, and I, I don't have a, actually what I would call a blueprint, I've sort of got something in my head that I wanna do, but the one thing I've always hated wrestling out of the trailer is this miter saw. I usually would keep it up there, slid under the shelves in the front, and you'd have to go get it. And then this stand, that it sits on, I usually, it was in the way. Usually it sat in the floor or somewhere. So I'm gonna design this around not being aggravated getting the saw out. So I'm gonna design this in the back to where I can reach and get it. And obviously I'll come out over it with some storage above it. But then I'm gonna make me a chute for that stand to slide back in there to where I can reach and get it and uh, get things out of the way. So. No blueprint in, in, in place, but uh, I'm kind of like just gonna build it as I go. Uh, it won't be perfect when I get it done. I'll say, well, I wish I'd have moved this here or there, but it'll be a little better than what we had. All right, we got to start. Got my little box from the miter saw to set in and reach and grab it. And then I'm gonna build a trough down through here and then I'm going to partition this off and I'll leave a place to slide levels and push broom and that sort of thing to where you can easily get it. So I will come on top of that with a shelf and that way I can get that stuff in now there. And then on the back side, I'll enclose this so I'll have two two channels there for that longer stuff to go in and then basically start customizing it as I go to fit everything. So anyway, progress being made. Most people probably know this, but when you're cutting plywood, and if you care about the finish, put the good side down. Circular saw rotates, it cuts on the upstroke, so it'll pull those frays and those splinters up. So turn your bad side up, and that way you, you'll have a little splinter cut on the bottom side. day and try to get everything sort of sorted out and at least get it pieced back in so I can use it but anyway I always was aggravated with carrying this miter saw I had it usually sitting up in the floor so I've moved it back here to where it's got its own hole and I can reach and grab it and take it when I need it the stand that goes for it it was always a pain. It seemed to be always in the way, so I just made a little chute, got it lined in carpet, that way it slides in and out. I think that'll be pretty handy. Levels and 
squares and that sort of thing. I always was hanging them up somewhere, so I've all right on top of this. I just divide that off, made me a shoot. So I've got this extended drill bit. So some longer stuff goes in there. The drop cords will be back here, tool belt, and then you'll always, I always seem to need a drill or a driver. So I'll just put them back here at the back of the trailer and then I'll put some up here. I'll use this for, I don't know exactly what, but I'll probably put a little driver set, maybe some drill bits back here in the back so that way it's readily available. I'm gonna you try this, try these little totes and, and just, you know, the, all my caulking stuff in this one and, and paint stuff and uh, different kinds of fasteners. So I'm gonna play around with it. I'm gonna try these totes, see how it goes, but I'm gonna try to divide off some tool storage here and just go all the way up, way individual tools I can separate them out. And then up there I'm gonna set the table saw and I'm, I'm just kind of going planning as I go. So anyway, I'm sure it'll be something I wish I'd have done different, but I'm gonna try to get everything organized so I know where it's at and it's not sliding around on top of one another. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill I'm gonna come through here. I've marked my lines on my edges and got my X's on one side. I want my material. This is sort of cantilevered here, so it can time and time could could flex. I've got support back under it where that my miter saw stand comes underneath. So I've got support about right here, which will hold this this hold it stiff. So I'm gonna pre-drill and come up from the bottom and screw into this so it will hold everything up so these shelves will go in and actually help support this thing and hold it together, so. These old shelves, obviously it doesn't match, even these have been stained, but I had these from a, a shelf a long time ago, which it's good three quarter inch plywood, so I hung on to it. And uh, yeah, it ain't gonna match, but anyway, it'll make good uh, shelf dividers, so I'm gonna use it. And uh, we'll call it two-toned in here. else feels the same way I do, but they are the outlaw Phillips head screws. They stink, but I bought a box of them, so I'm going to use them, but I don't like them. Let's get the base down, we'll roll on. Tell you what, I've had a corded DeWalt saw for, for years, and I've I started buying DeWalt a long time ago. I bought a little five-piece set and of the old 18-volt stuff, and I've used it and I can honestly say I've never had a tool of theirs tear up on me. I mean, I've used them, the 18 volt batteries, they just gave out and about that time, the 20 volt stuff come along. So I've started buying the 20 volt stuff, but I know there's other makes and models out there and everybody has their preference, but I've always had really good service out of the wall tool. So I've stuck with the brand since I've got the batteries, but had the corded saw for, for years, but I, we're up there getting ready to build the house and I don't have power up there yet, so I'm gonna need a corded or a cordless circular saw. So just the other day I said, well, I might as well go ahead and get me one. So I ended up going with the Flex Bolt circular saw. 
And I was, uh, I had to, I was working on a little project the other day and had to rip a two before. And if you've ever ripped a two before long ways, you know it's kind of tough on a circular saw. But this cordless stuff is amazing. Uh, it'll outcut that corded saw two to one in my opinion. So anyway, it, it just blows my mind what they can do with a battery. But this one's got the nine amp hour, the flex volt, but that is a cutting machine. So anyway, I've just, used it very little but I'm pleased with it so far. Anytime I'm laying something out I'd much rather use a template or something a guide rather than just measuring you don't get plywood these days or any kind of material that is that's a true half inch. It'll be a sixteenth or thirty second off. So in this case like laying out shelves, I'm gonna use actually cut off from the material I'm actually using. As, as a guide, so that way I know where I need to lay my marks out, and I'll use my shelf material that I want to bring it in, and I can mark and lay it out, and that way everything will be lined up. This this end, I guess, end wall, you, you could call it, is going to be sitting on top of the shelf I've got in there, so what I'm going to do is I'll glue this on the end and then I'm going to use pocket holes to secure it so it sits down and I can, I can screw it down, which it's going to have all the shelves tied into it and when it's all put together it'll be one unit. This will just keep the bottom secure. Always make sure you're drilling your holes on the bottom, in this case and not the top. Put me a T up on the top of my plywood here so I didn't make that mistake. I'll get three on one side and I'll come back and get two in the center of those. That way we can pull it on both sides. holes on bigger sheet stuff you're better off to just take this let your material hang out over the side move this versus sitting up here and trying to hold a big piece of material and then clamp it keeping it square I find it's a lot easier to just do it that way I know one thing I'll be glad when this mess is all gone I've got tools scattered everywhere I'm trying to see what I got and where I need to make holes for this mess is getting on my nerves. I use my scrap material of this out there to lay out my lay out my shelves. As you can see, everything works out. And if I put a half inch there, my shelf will work out here and work yourself up. So if you can use a guide, I would recommend it. All right, I'm gonna put a little glue down here and we'll screw this up, and then we'll start working on our shelf material. Another row of dividers another shelf and then we'll put her top on it and we'll be ready to go never leave home without your wood glue it'll hold more than a screw wheel i love how you buy this stuff and it's about the price of gold every piece you get has got a nice warp to it it's always enjoyable So what I'm gonna have to do is I'll go behind it. I'll go in there and pick me a nail in behind it to drive it over. As you can see, I'm gonna line it up with that edge. Well, I don't have enough hands, so I'll push it over, drive me a little nail to hold it, and then screw my screw in. All right, now this is not finished cabinetry work here. So if you was building a set of kitchen cabinets, you probably wouldn't do this. But in this case, that this piece of plywood was bowed nobody here to help me hold it so it was hanging it was bowed back this way about a half a, or three-eighths of an inch anyway so what i done drive your nail at an angle 
and then just pick it up until you get it lined up the way you want it so sometimes when you only got one set of hands you got to do what you got to do that's that helps a lot Not the ideal setup, but it works. This trailer, when I I've, I've, when I, when I started putting this stuff in here, I, I squared this off the back of the trailer here so everything set in here square, but this trailer's been pulled here and there and covered a lot of ground, so when you get inside here and start working, not everything's perfectly true. So when I squared the cabinet up with the back, when I come down this side, this this wall here is not exactly square to the outside wall so i know i'm square back here because that's a corner that i established so if you're cutting sheet goods and i learned this a long time ago you'd think well i'll just cut it square and it'll be good you've got to find a reference point so i always this is a fix down at the bottom that's a fixed distance down here at the bottom so if i want this thing to be I guess parallel to each other as it works its way up I've got to take my measurement from down here at the bottom but we've got about 27 and a half inches from here back and so I, I know I'm a little out of square here where this meets the bottom shelf so what I'm going to do you got to have a reference point to start off of so the fronts of my shelves are straight but what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a level down, establish a straight line, and then I'm going to square off of my level. Well, if you notice, I'm hitting at the front, but I've got a gap in the back. So what I'll do, I'll take this measurement across the front. That'll establish my measurement. And then what I'll do is I'll transfer a line back to the back, get the difference. I'll cut the other side square. And then it looks like I'm going to have to add about a quarter of an inch to that corner to make everything work out so I don't have a gap across my shelf. I'll get it laid out and we'll cut it and stick it in there. All right, I've got my, got my lint set. Here's my measurement at the bottom. Now, what I'm going to do is this is the... This back here is the front because I'm, I'm cutting it upside down because I want to circular saw is going to cut up so it'll, it'll splinter to the bottom side that way we won't see it so this is going to be the back of the cabinet so i, I measured it in there and i'm at about in the back it's about three eighths or actually it's about five sixteenths well, i'm marking it wrong five sixteenths gap on the back side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this 5 sixteenths. I'm going to come back over, get on my square line over there, bring it out 5 sixteenths, make me a new mark, and that should fit in there like a glove. So here's square, here's 5 sixteenths added. 
I'll cut on this line, and when I flip it over, this will be at the back, and it should fit in. Let's see how we're done. This golden plywood, they say, you know, I'll have to sell it to you at the price of gold. But anyway, it's it's got a little bow in it here. But as you can see, I've got a little gap here at the front and got a little gap at the back. I'll get over here and square this corner up, push it over, and then I'll come in the back side, screw that shelf in, and that should straighten it up. And it ain't perfect, but I mean, like I say, it's not. we're not building cabinets, and I mean, I'm just cutting it free-handed with a circular saw. But if you're cutting shelves, find you a straight reference mark and then square off of it. And if you need to add or take away, then you can do that because I will tell you, there's not a lot of stuff you're gonna work on that's gonna be perfectly square unless you start from scratch and build it yourself. All right, got first shelf installed. You see her gap turned out pretty good for just free hand with a skill saw. But anyway, got uh, the bottom divider screwed in from the top. And uh, anyway, we'll put the next set of dividers in. I'll use pocket holes to screw them down. I'll glue the bottoms. We'll line them up with the, with the bottom row. We'll come on up, put another shelf on, and we'll move right along. Got our shelves put in. Got our top shelf up here. And I had some just cutoffs laying around, so I made me a lip around the top. Got it screwed in so that way anything I put on top it can't slide out. But I've got 15 cubbies. I'm gonna add a little bumper up here at the front, keep stuff from sliding out. But uh, that should get rid of a lot of tools and be able to kind of categorize them, put them together. If I got two skill saws, put them in a bin, reciprocating saws. And I'm gonna try to put the stuff that goes with them, stick it in this cubby. That way I've got it all in one place. So we'll keep it working. Well, I got most of the organization done. Give you a quick walk through. Back on the back tool belts, extension cords, drills, because I always need those usually about every time. Levels and longer stuff slide back in here. Miter saw stand, miter saw so you don't have to wrestle that out of the trailer. Still got my, I still left my, my angle on the free wall here. If you need to stand sheetrock up or whatever it may be, you've got that space to, to use it for. I'm going to try, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to try these totes and just, I get, uh, a lot of times you just have so much, you know, you don't want to get rid of something because you think, well, I might need that up you know, a 10 foot piece of wire or something, especially if you're remodeling, you'll always need something. But anyway, I've got these boxes so I can just miscellaneous stuff, plumbing, electrical, tapes and caulk and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna try these. I've got some small ones. These are the seven gallon ones. And then I've got some 12 gallon ones as well. So we'll see, but I've tried to label the front of them so I can see what it is. Place for hammers, sledgehammers, pro uh, pry bars, crowbars, whatever you want to call it. Then I've got a little shelf up here for all my bag stuff. Got my nailers up there. Just miscellaneous tools. And then I've got 15 compartments here that I can put everything in. I made them kind of deep. That way if I had two, like a skill saw, I can have another one back in there. Now that I've got that cordless, I doubt that corded one will get used much. I'm really, really pleased with that flex bolt uh, cordless saw. But anyway, just the fasteners in the floor, miscellaneous stuff, transit, hand saws, staplers, routers, and I've got a little cubby for my table saw. The only thing I like doing on it is I've got to come in here and secure it so it can't roll around on me. I always wrestled around with shovels and rakes and that sort of thing. So I made a little compartment here so I can stick them in. The way you can reach and get it when you need it, but they're not in the way. Another little shelf up here. Don't know what I'll do with it. And then I've got my old dresser. It's been riding with me for a long time. 
and then my little compartments up there and i've i've got it sized so these little bins these green bins will go in there and fill those up so i hadn't got my head around how i'm going to do that yet then got a toolbox here so you can fit all your hand tools so it's about time to build a house and i figured i need to get the tool tool trailer ready so we can get it done i'll catch you on the next one Thank <laughs> you.